We begin the conversation today in Nigeria, where President Bola Tinubu has given the green light for significant reshuffle in the Nigerian ministerial assignments list. Abubakar Momo's transition to the Federal Ministry of Niger Delta of Niger Delta Development has been endorsed, while a minister designate is in line for the Federal Ministry of Youth. It is also noteworthy of the realignment that Adigwe Gao Yetola Bumi Tunji Ojo and Saido Alkali take up new roles in the ministries of transportation, interior, marine and blue economy, respectively. Uh, joining me this evening on this conversation to unpack this latest development is Dr. Uh, Daya Kayade, political analyst. And I also have Razak Alokoba, a convener, campaign uh, for dignity in governance. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for uh, joining me on the conversation today. I'd like to begin uh, with Razak, who's in the studio uh, with me. Uh, Razak, could you kindly explain the reasoning behind uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's decision to have this last-minute reshuffling? Uh, you have the redeployment of Abubakar Momo uh, from the Federal Ministry of Youth to the Federal Ministry of Niger Delta, uh, development. Uh, what do you make of this last minute reshuffling and does this signal uh, a message that, you know, this government is not really ready because the, the, the president has had more than 60 days uh, post inauguration to constitute a cabinet. What's your take on this? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the president will know the main reason why he has to do that. But for analysts, like us and my colleagues, ditto for other analysts across the country, it will be legitimate for us to draw assumptions because you will be presiding over us. And from my own estimation, there is no time that is too late mm. for you to do the things that I think is most appropriate for you. The president of Nigeria has enormous tax to perform. And given this is a enormous task. He has to do a lot of uh, precision and accuracy in carrying out all this engagement as a president. There's no time for us to do experiment again. Since 1999 mm -hmm. to date, the president has the opportunity to learn from the area of strength and weakness of Obasanjo, Yaradua, Jonathan, and Buhari. And that is what I think has informed what he's doing at the moment. For us as a people and for me, my own personal opinion as a political scientist, I think whatever he wants to do, we should create a barricade around him to make sure he succeeds in doing it. Mm -hmm. Such that we will not accept, um, I, I should have done this way, but the agitation that I should not do it. Let him put in place what he wanted to do and let's start the grand uh, uh, running. The Niger crisis is there, calling for attention. Are we going into Niger? Are we not going to Niger? There's been a lot of debate. COVID-19 may likely rear his ugly head again from what we are hearing from the fillers. And there's removal of a subsidy, security challenges, and other situations. So let him put in place his own cabinet. It is called Chinobu's cabinet. So let him do it. We can only guide him. And, you know, being in government is different from being in business. There are a lot of people that are coming from the private sector. We have to prepare their mind that you are not going into government. You are no longer in business. And I think mm -hmm. from the interaction uh, stakeholders have had with these uh, nominees that have become ministers now, today, it's a signal that uh, further interaction is what has exposed them to areas where they may have strength than where they were before. And that is what has informed uh, the president uh, uh, decision. So for yeah. us as a people, we don't let us uh, put up ourselves in the panic mode. Let's uh, tell them clearly that we want them to eat the ground running. So there must be a clear message to them that uh, the deficiency of what they should do, do and there's no time for them to continue to uh, experiment with our life. Yeah, I don't have full complacency, uh, Mr. Lokoba, but mm. I'd like to pick up from uh, where you left off uh, in your last sentence. When should Nigerians, or uh, what will be a fair time to assess 
you know, there's ministers that have been sworn in today. Their, uh, their stewardship, uh, would it be two years? What, can you give us a definite timeline uh, to begin to look at uh, their performance levels? And also, following from the last administration, we had a situation where ministers were there for eight years. There was hardly any sort of uh, benchmark uh, to assess them. And it was almost like a reward uh, for them, whether they performed or not. Some ministers stayed the whole length of the eight years. Uh, and my second question is also on your assessment of this cabinet. Um, some critics have said, you know, President Tinubu uh, just constituted this uh, cabinet to reward those who helped him uh, emerge victorious in the general elections. What's your assessment of this? Well, they want, for me, uh, the question is for me. The question is for me, right? Yes, yes okay. Mr. Uh, first and foremost, there's no moral issue about uh, I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm involved politically mm. and someone appoints me. There's no moral issue about that. There's nothing bad in uh, appointing someone that took part in the political process. So it doesn't call for any debate, except you want to major a minor. And essentially, you will appoint someone that has uh, faith in what you are doing. All the people, political politicians that surround us, is because they believe in the manifesto, manifesto of APC. You cannot appoint someone who doesn't have faith in your manifesto. So that answers that. Then the benchmark, you see? Yeah, but we have a minister, the yeah. FCT minister, Sorensi Cotton there, uh, mm. Mr. Nielsen Wike, okay. but it's not even a member of the ruling All Progressive Congress. It's just the magnanimity of uh, APC and the president that made him give we get that position. The kind of political system we run, there's no room for another political party. If you run parliamentary system or government, and that is educating the younger ones, who, who juggle parliamentary for presidential. In parliamentary system of government, the, it's in the parliament that you are going to appoint the, mini, the, mini, the prime minister will appoint the ministers, and political parties will get portfolios based on the percentage of votes you have. So it is possible under uh, parliamentary system of government to have in the same government Minister for Transportation from PDP, mm -hmm. Minister for Education from APC, Minister for Defense, that is uh, from Labour Party. That is from the same, uh, in, 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 in the same government, that's parliamentary. Under presidential system of government, when you listen to young people or even people who expect to know better to say that uh, the government of Nigeria should always accommodate opposition, I say, no, don't mess things up. Under presidential system of government, it is when I take all. Take this is not my opinion. I'm speaking from the center of knowledge. Now, for Wiki to get a space in the government, that is to say that uh, the, the outlook for or performance is the focus of APC. Do you think you it's the, do you, do you, sorry to interrupt you, do you think it's really the output of performance that is the factor? Because I remember speaking a with lot of uh, things, Senator, a lot of things come to I, I, I spoke with Senator Shil Sani last mm. week, a mm. uh, member of the uh, Eighth National Assembly, and he did talk about this issue. He said uh, Nielsen Wike has coll should collect his coins and resign honorably that what he did, uh, he was a Judas, uh, for the People's Democratic Party and remaining in that party while being a member of the cabinet in an APC led it, it, government so, so, is, so, 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 Sonny, is not the so, honorable thing to do. So, mm, what's your take on that, Razak? So, so Sonny is a comrade, like a colleague in the struggle, but he should have allowed PDP members to push their position and marshal their points rather than him doing that. He's not a member of a PDP. You can't cry more than they believed. So, if that is uh, uh, comfortable for PDP to say have wiki mm. in their party, so be it. And beyond political issues, beyond politicking, we've got to a time in Nigeria that uh, we must realize that the rest of the world are not waiting for us. The art we occupy today, scientists say it is too contaminated. People are looking for habitation in the other planet. But we are still battling for what we are going to hear tonight. Mm -hmm. Many Nigerians are. So nobody is going to wait for us. There are conclusions about Africa that we have become a burden to humanity. That's why the fact that the strongest economy in the world, the strongest country in the world militarily, takes raw material to become what they become from Africa. Yes. But we still have these challenges. So 
Nobody, no, so, so let us stop majoring on minor issues. Let's focus on who can fix it. For me, WK has the required temperament to fix FCT. FCT require, because if you look at the blueprint of FCT, right from the days Shagari first mentioned it, this is not the picture of what we had in mind. Babangida came into Abuja orally. There should be satellite towns that should be servicing Abuja. But if you look at Abuja, to no satellite town that is being culturally developed by the federal government. There are satellites that came up unconsciously by personal effort, and that is not correct. That is, not part, of the that is not part of the master plan. Yes, because the line has been divided by, between politicians and central to each other. So all the satellite towns are supposed to be closer where cooks, drivers, who have local, uh, local, local houses to live, but no plan for them. Everything has been modeled up. So we need someone to come around to create a buffer. A buffer means that someone that will be servicing uh, 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 the rest, the Abuja metropolis, where we know that it's an but, but, but looking at uh, this, that's a pattern all over the world. Look, looking at the background you, of the person. You, you, New uh, Jersey, let me quickly make this point. Yes. New Jersey is close to New York. If you can't live in New York, you take a two hour train to New mm -hmm. Jersey or five hours. I can't remember clearly. And that is what is called the developmental agenda for a mega city. So uh, for, for us, we must begin to look in that direction. And that but, is what I think the president had in mind when he brought Wiki on board. But, but looking at the person of still staying on the subject of the person of just you near know, some week, his background mm -hmm. is in law and uh, he's been in politics since 1999. Started yeah. off as chief of staff uh, to the former River State governor. So it's not a small uh, fry. Yeah, so, I mean, what's his expertise in managing? Uh, does it fit into that portfolio? What, 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 you, need, what, what you need, what you need, this is the area the, the government of Nigeria needs more education on. There are certain issues that we should not be debating again. Governance anywhere in the world just requires to have average intelligence. Hmm. Build your institutions. Once you have strong institutions, Anybody can rule it. Look at the weakness that has been expressed by Bush, the son, severally. But because America has a very strong institution, the limitation didn't show. What we need in Nigeria is a strong institution. Once we have a strong institution, a lawyer can man any institution in Nigeria. For, mm -hmm. Okay, look at it. Is our president a, a lawyer? Is he an engineer? Is he a medical doctor? But he's going to be presiding over a nation that requires medical attention, sure. that requires rules to be constructed that would require so many things. Security. So security is not a military man. Once you have a strong institution, all things will fall in place. The only requirement you need from a political head is the will. When you ask that political, fashion life is not in an engineer now. And look at what he has done in rules construction. I don't think any rules of works under difficult condition mm -hmm. that he finds himself has done as much as what he has done. So, and he, he, when he was in Lagos, he became... Uh, okay, if we look at Lagos, look at the, the way things work around in Lagos. He was, was a former banker, he was formerly a banker, but he was doing a lot of, because of the institution that he has in place, they able to go this far. So in essence, what I'm saying is that uh, no matter the institution that you have in Nigeria, once our institution is strong enough, you will be able to do, except Minister of, uh, Minister of Ed, where we, a doctor is required to be yes. the Minister of Justice, where a lawyer or women at first, where you need a woman. Woman, yeah, yeah, so. woman, we can manage and put a man who has understanding of what women is also there. Not necessarily <laughs> yeah, about the you. gender. I, now, I re you. Considering this last minute changes in ministerial positions, the completion of the documentation, and earlier today, uh, the minister designates were sworn in. What are some of the immediate challenges that the new ministers might face as they assume their roles? Uh, what should be the expectations of Nigerians and governors uh, moving forward? Because in the last 60 plus days, uh, the president has only been operating with the retinue of uh, special advisors and uh, he's been running the show uh, almost alone. Well, uh, the, 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 frank enough uh, to all of us, uh, and that is, this, that's the message to the president and the minister. Nigerians are in a hurry. But the truth of the matter is that uh, we should not be in the audio. I have been espousing this position long before. Yeah, but, but, so, to sorry to interrupt you there. When you say we shouldn't be in the shouldn't be in the they're, they're not, The sort of issues we're dealing with. For results. I mean, you should not be in the audio for they, results. They, there needs to be a sense of urgency. For Nigerians. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking to Nigerians now. Yes. I'm, I'm coming back to 
the ministers and the government. Nigerians should not be in a hurry to see a quick result. Because if you do a garbage in, you get a garbage out. To fix security, we have advocated for state police. We've, we've been in, this is about my 33 years of advocacy. I've been in agitation. So if I put in three decades of uh, 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 advocacy in the matter of this magnitude, and the government will understand. When I knew Ashwaju for the first time in 1994 that we, I, I met him, is someone that we will not take the excuse from if he didn't give us the perfect security architecture we have always been advocating for. To put a proper security architecture that will require peculiarities of state, local, uh, and other layers of security, it's not a one year thing, it's not a two year thing. That's for security. Then for the economy, we all understand the blue, blue economy is coming on board. Mm. To be able to diversify, look away from oil, let's go into agro allied, let's go into oligy, let's go into telecoms, to revamp your economy, to give dignity to your naira. It's not a one year thing. Now, having said all, all of this, let's look at the gestation period of two years. That's the truth. If the Nigerian wants to, yeah, that is the truth. Then so, would, would you also put that two years as a government. timeline to? Uh, you know, evaluate the performance no, of no, this for, for, now for, for Now for government. Yes. For government, what the government will need to do is to, to, to first admit, be courageous enough to admit that uh, something is wrong with our political structure. If we think we can offer solution to Nigerian problem with the political structure, that is the error of Buhari too. That was the error of Jonathan. That was the error of Obasanjo. We were against Obasanjo as soon as he became the president. And arrogantly, he thought that uh, this structure can do the magic. The year we had today. The same thing when the Jonathan came on board. I met Jonathan 21 times personally as a civil society member. Mm. Not a person about that. And we have always advised him that, uh, Mr. President, the country is going nowhere with this political structure. Soon as President Buhari became the president, I'm an advocate of Buhari. I supported him this much. And the, the, what he can do with this rickety structure, I gave him kudos. But the error and the mistake and the blame I have for him is to assume that uh, something can be achieved with the political structure. It was nine, nine, nine years, seven years and nine months, he realized that uh, this political structure mm. is truly defective and it brought about devolution of power on power sector and a few other things. That's what I expected to be able to start building on now. And that is the template the, they should be working on. There is no guarantee of prosperity for Nigeria with this political structure. I'm saying this from what the model we have studied all over the world that a country like Nigeria with a peculiarity but, cannot survive with political structure. So that's that, the direction. But, but now that some uh, issues have been taken off the exclusive list, uh, like you said, we after need more. We need more. And, we need uh, more. We need more. What are some of mm. the areas uh, mm. you're looking at so that governors uh, that almost get a free pass uh, would also uh, be involved in nation building rather than going cap we, we need in a thorough, to we need, a, we need a thorough and location. significant devolution of power to states. There's no magic the federal government can do with the numbers of responsibilities that has been assigned to the federal government. There's no way government, the federal government can, can, can take care of all of that. And that's the, that, that is the limitation the structure so that you start creating more institutions. Up to the point that we started creating um, uh, um, federal character. Federal character is a ministry to cover the aberration of this structure. Because if there, when there's nothing at the center for you to look into, there will be no need for Federal Character Commission. We want to take care of each other. And that is why, that is why we strongly advocate that resources that is found in a state is the exclusive right of that state. Let the federal government hands off all the resources. Niger Delta should be in control of their resources. People have gold in their domain should be in control of their gold and pay certain uh, to the center. Let people who have bitumen, who have lead, who have a lot of things that can use to build can, uranium, to do intercontinental missile, let them be in control of it. That is how country is run. Yeah, economy, but you know, all fingers are not equal. Too, uh, on security. It, all, all fingers are not equal. And if you have a situation where there is people no with state in Nigeria, uh, take that, there's, there's no state in Nigeria that does not have resources to take care of itself. It's because the state has been indulged. One of the poorest states in the country today is, a, is one of the richest in mineral resources, which is Nasarawa and Kogi. That one has the richest in mineral resources. And uh, because there's always a Babiala approach every month to come and collect money in Abuja and spend it on things that are not priority to the state. And that's how we are where we are today. And one of the states that is suffering the greatest brunt, one of it is Lagos, 
Kano, Potter Court, some states like that who have capacity to stand on their own, you are deliberately and unconsciously because of the political structure. Okay. You are not making it and not allowing them to, to grow. So, in moving forward, this is the focus of the government. We should not be under the illusion that this political structure can take us anywhere. On security, there is nowhere in the world that have a secured country that runs this kind of security system. We are not saying that our police are not doing well. They are doing well. They are doing fine. But for 250 million Nigerians, the number of police, if it is subdivided, is ridiculous. There are peculiarities in some states that require solutions from the state, not from the federal police. So as a result of that, there must be a state police. In fact, to the extent that there must be forest police, there are countries the world that have to even transport mm -hmm. police. So on security, there must be the evolution of power in all the segment of our life. Do you, but are, do you, are, we, are we really ripe for state policing? Because some have said, you know, there's governors, uh, the chief executives no, of states no, will see, use them we, to we, haunt their see, political opponents. Uh, my brother, people who introduce political restructuring into the lexicon, political lexicon of Nigeria, you didn't allow them to give you content. People just jump up to assume that they understand what is called restructuring. State police is... It, Lord, there will be a law that will be tied to the federal police. Just like a president has, has the right to declare set of managers in any state. Hmm. The federal uh, uh, lawmaker has the right to take over the activity of a state when it's getting out of hand. In the same way, a federal police, the law must tie them the right to federalize any state police that wants to turn to the governor's militia. There must be a law around it, but people don't have sufficient knowledge of what is called the state police. They just assume that it's a personal profit. When was the last time the last number officer has arrested someone on the basis of the fact that I was a PDP member? They can't do that. Hmm. They can't do that. So the same thing with state police too. See, if you want to run a country, let's run our country. If you want to continue to rig maroon and create a crisis of perspective for you, let's continue. And for me, I think we should justice this rhetorics and face our problem. There is nothing like immaturity in taking control of our life. So if you are not okay. mature, then why, do we, why are we seeking for independence? Why are we going uh, to Nigeria uh, to fight? Yeah. Uh, uh, on that note, why, like why are we to... unhappy about the fact that Burkina Faso is uh, bringing back the military? Yeah. We are mature for anything that is happening in any part of the world. We are mature for it. We can talk control of ourselves. It is the manner and way we are running around that makes us look as if we are a toddler in governance. Between 1960 to 1966, yeah. look at the wonders I will Look at the wonders that Sadawna did, and Azikwe and Tafa Balewa did. Yes. Because there were institutions in place. The political so, structures there were perfect. So we need stronger institutions. Yes. Uh, and uh, we need uh, leaders that have the political will uh, to also uh, take tough decisions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Razak, who look about conveyor. Campaign for dignity in governance. It was a, an absolute pleasure, pleasure speaking you. with you. I do appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you.